All right. Solving radical equations. Really, you've been doing this a lot already. We're just going to be um, adding a little bit more complicated problems to our to our mix. And so, let's just start with this one. Um, the least connected with the x, right? Is this minus three? And so we're going to add three to both sides. And so we're left with the square root of four x plus eight. One plus three is four. And now we, we've got everything stuck in this square root. And so we've got to undo the square root by squaring it. Remember, the square root's like the one-half power. And so we're undoing the one-half power by raising it to the second power. Those are reciprocals. And so that undoes it. So we're left with 4x plus 8. And 4 times 4 is 16. Get rid of this 8. Subtract 8. 4x equals 8. Divide by 4, x equals 2. So, you always want to double check these answers, and I'll explain why here in a little bit. But plug in 2, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 8, square root. 8 plus 8 is 16, the square root of 16 is 4, and 4 minus 3 is 1. So it checks out. x equals 2 is our answer. Same thing goes over here, a little trickier because we've got the one-third power, but not a problem because you guys have been well prepared for that. So, subtract our 13, get rid of that first. You got your x to the one-third equals 4. How do you undo a one-third power? Well, to undo the squared power, the square root, we squared both sides. Undo a one-third power, raise it to it's reciprocal because then these exponents are going to multiply one-third times three every single time anything times its reciprocal is going to be one so we're going to get x to the first power equals four to the third power and four times four is sixteen times four is sixty four there we have it cube root of sixty four just talked about was 4, and 4 plus 13 is 17, so it checks out as well. So what's the trick? Well, we've got to undo undo the operations. Undo the pluses, the minuses, the multiplication, the division to get the square root or the power by itself. So we got in our first one, we got our square root by itself first by adding the 3. And same thing in the second one, we subtracted 13 to get the, the power by itself. And then the rest of it's sort of trapped underneath. And so then you undo the power. Undo root or the power, undo the power or the square root, whatever it is, the root by raising it to its reciprocal. This is that caret button kind of on the sign, but to its reciprocal. So what we just saw over there, we had one third, and we raised it to the third power because they were reciprocals. Same thing with the one half to the two. And then solve the rest, finish solving. So before I said it's very important to check your answers. The reason being is we get these things called extraneous solutions. So two key things here. We've got extra, and then the other part is the word erroneous, which is a big fancy word for error. Um, and so we get extra wrong answers. And so it's, it's a very unfair process because funny things happen when you square both sides because when you square both sides, you get rid of negatives. And so these extra answers come up because that's what you're forced to do in solving the equation, but you have to check it because it may not be an answer after all. For example, to undo the square root, you have to square both sides. When you square both sides you get x plus 1 
equals 25. Fair enough. Doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with it. Subtract the 1, you get x equals 24. When you check your answer, we already circle it or something because we think it's the right answer, but when you check it, 24 plus 1, square root of 25, square root of 25 is 5, but this is supposed to be equal to the other side, which was negative 5. 5, negative 5, not the same thing. So, 24, not an answer. So what is the answer? Well, to this one specifically, there is no answer. And actually, we could have known that at the beginning. There is not a number that if you take the square root of it, you can get a negative 5. Uh, it's just impossible. You can't take the square root of some number and get a negative number. And so anytime you see that square root set equal to a negative, that's a tip-off. Not always are they this obvious. But even in the middle of solving, if you ever see that, you can sort of see that you're going to get no solution. Sometimes you don't see it, and you finish it, but then you check your answer, and then sure enough, you're like, well, I guess I didn't have to do all that work after all. Anyway, moving on. Get the power by itself. So before we take the reciprocal power, Let's get rid of this 2. Got to do it by dividing by 2, both sides. And you get x plus 4 to the 2 thirds equals 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Now, undoing a 2 thirds power looks kind of tricky, but what we said before, raise it to its reciprocal. Reciprocal of 2 thirds, just flip it over. Raise it to the 3 halves. And now this is a good review from the first part x plus 4. 2 thirds, 3 halves. The whole reason we did that, those multiply, they cancel out to 1. Equals 4 to the 3 halves. So we've been doing this without a calculator. We split up the 3 from the 2. And so bring the 1 half first. 2 on the bottom, so it's a 1 half. And then cube it. 4 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. And then we cube it, because we've already taken care of the 1 half. So 2 cubed is 8, because 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. Subtract 4, x equals 4. Now, one thing we want to keep in mind. When we square root of both sides, we've been getting really good at it, adding the plus or the minus but we want to make sure we remember this when we're dealing with powers and so technically by taking both sides to the three halves power we added we need to add a plus or a minus here as we take the root of both sides and so right here there's a plus or minus two that's being cubed and so that ends with a plus or minus eight again anytime you take an even root and so you might want to make a note plus or minus, make a little asterisk here for yourself. Do I need the plus or minus any time you take the even root? Square root, fourth root, one-fourth power, one-sixth power, anything like that. Um, and so we get plus or minus 8. And so we got 4, but then x plus 4 was also equal to negative 8. And so subtract the 4, x equals negative 12. Want to double check your answer. When you plug 4 in, four plus 4 to the 2 thirds, that's 8. 2 thirds undoes the exact same thing we did. The cube root of 8 squared. Cubed root of 8 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, and so we get 8. Same thing happens with this one, except you get a negative 12. Negative 12 plus 4 is a negative 8, and now we're raising negative 8 to the 2 thirds power. Because that squared is in there, it's going to undo that negative, because you're squaring it, and so you're going to get the exact same thing you did the last time, and so both of these answers work out.